Today's backhand tennis lesson is dedicated to those 3.5 players who want to win more matches at their level and get to the next level. So I want you to watch this video and I want you to ask yourself, what style of backhand do you play with the most? So at the recreational level, I see two basic types of backhands all day long. And today we're mostly gonna focus on the one hand backhand. We also did this with the forehand and it set off a lot of light bulbs. So I thought it would really help you on the backhand as well. So when you're out there at the recreational level, you either have a push backhand or you have a swing backhand. The biggest problem though out there is most people watching videos, especially if you have a one hand backhand, what are you doing? You're watching video after video Video of Roger Federer showing his one hand toss and backhand and that is what you want to hit every single shot like. So you're here and you're trying to hit backhands like the great Roger Federer but the problem is is you actually have a push backhand rather than a swing backhand. Okay so let me explain the difference between a swing backhand and a push backhand and what I want you to do is identify what comes the most natural to you because that's the one you want to hit more often. Everybody's trying to hit mostly a swing backhand. That's their dream. They want to come over the ball. So a swing backhand, what it's rewarded with is a lot of racket head speed and that puts the rotation and the spin on the ball and this is the one that most people are obsessed with trying to learn because it looks really awesome and when you do it right it feels amazing and you can hit a lot of top spin and it's really really fun to execute and it looks and it looks beautiful. The problem with that is to be able to do it consistently out of two out of three sets, especially if you have a one-hander, that's really, really hard to do. It's really hard to do when the ball gets high, when you're on the run, when the ball gets low. You pretty much have to have impeccable timing and perfect technique because if you're a little off in tennis, tennis is a lot like golf. If you're a little off in tennis, so the rack face is a little off, then you're way off and you're gonna miss a lot of shots. And so that's why it's also important to do what's called a push backhand. And there's different types of push backhands out there. One, and the one that I recommend that you really learn how to do, I, you might think of it as a slice backhand. Why don't I just call it a slice backhand? Because what I want you to understand is that when you're hitting topspin, it's a swinging motion. It's built on racket head speed and rotation and you're putting spin on the ball. When you're hitting a slice shot, it's more built on a pushing style. You're pushing in your shoulders, in your hips, and in your hand. When those three, three things connect, then you can hit a really nice, beautiful slice backhand. And that would be a pushing motion. But also, let's say a really fast serve is coming. There's two ways to basically push that ball back in place. So it's very important to have a couple different pushing styles off your one-hander. So let's say you're in a topspin grip and the serve comes, well you, and it's coming over 100 miles an hour, you shouldn't be swinging at that return. You're most likely gonna miss it unless you have just unbelievable timing, which if you're rated a 3-5 or 4-0, oh, it's probably not unbelievable timing. So it's gonna be better off just kind of blocking the ball, kind of just pushing your shoulder forward, even though that's topspin, right? there but that's all you need and if you connect at a good time you can absolutely crush that ball back so just because you are pushing the ball doesn't always mean that you're hitting the ball slow that's the beauty of a pushing technique you can sometimes hit the ball very hard if your timing's really good just based off pushing it you can also hit nice little drop shots you can hit great lobs so don't underestimate the power of, of having a push backhand versus a swing back Backhand. Now let's talk about the problems you might run into when you're trying to hit a swing backhand and a push backhand so you can kind of do some troubleshooting of your own so you can improve both of these techniques because again the main point of this lesson is you want to learn how to do both and you want to figure out the right formula to implement in your matches. You know, are you hitting the ball? Are you swinging at the shot uh, 60 or 70% of the time and pushing 30% of the time? Or are you more like Steffi Graf where you're actually pushing your slice backhand 
80 plus percent and maybe just hitting 20 percent. You have to figure out what works best for you. So what I see from people who want to hit a one hand backhand, let me know if you're in this camp. Most people are in this camp. They're like, I wish I could hit that one hand backhand, but as soon as I start a match, you know, the ball starts flying everywhere and I just resort to pushing and slicing the ball the whole match and I really am so mad at myself for that. First of all, don't be mad at yourself for that. Maybe you should just get amazing at pushing your slice backhand because Steffi Graf won a lot of grand slams is basically pushing her backhand okay so it's not the worst thing in the world but what happens to people the, the things that I see I see three main things that keep people from having a really awesome topspin backhand number one is a weak grip so you might be able to go out there when you're not so nervous and you bring the racket back to here and basically the tip points back to the fence and you're swinging through it it's kind of like a combination between a swing and a push and if the racket face, since you're in a weak grip, it's very easy for it to tilt up. And once the racket face tilts up, the ball is going to fly on you and you're going to lose a lot of confidence to swing at it. So you're just going to start pushing your back in. Another thing that people have trouble with is when they go to hit that one-hander is just what I was saying. They stop the racket here and they point the tip here. The pros today, if you watch the one-handers, they actually point their strings to the back fence. If you do that, that's most likely going to put you in a much better uh, grip and a much better power position and so that you can pull this racket but at the ball and then when you're hitting the ball you want to basically be knuckling up to the ball so you want to be knuckling up and out in front if you do this with a swing up to the ball and hit it there knuckles up then you'll be able to hit tossman you'll be able to impart tossman I'll do a couple of demos for you and and it'll be more consistent in your matches Hey guys, before I go to the next tip, B2 wanted me to remind you that we're coming up on a seven day backhand challenge. So go to seven day backhand challenge if you want to improve your backhand. And also he said, hey, just so I can sleep better in here, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And then the final mistake I see on that one hander that really holds people back from hitting the ball with confidence in a match is that because you're not confident, what ends up happening is you stop, you bring the racket at speed, then you stop and you kind of pull up on the shot and you have a, your arm is very bent with your follow through, okay? So it looks, it looks something like this. You're getting ready to hit it, but then you kind of like stop and then you pull up, you don't really hit the ball that hard. Lots of them fly up in the air. They go in all kinds of different situations. You add lots of tweaks. So when you watch the pros hit their backhand, what do you see? Whether you're thinking of Stan Vavrinka, Roger Federer, uh, Shapovalov, Justine Hennon, all those players, you really see that arm reach out as far as you can. So I put this, this on another video recently. I remember my coach who coached another awesome player at a one-hander, he would always tell him to air out the armpit. At the time, when I was a junior, I had a two-hand backhand. But I watched that lesson, I thought, wow, that looks beautiful. That airing out the armpit or almost looks like you're holding the Statue of Liberty. So practice that, go to the practice court, and when you're playing your matches, make sure you tell yourself to extend out to the target. Reach out as far as you can to the target, and you'll be hitting a much better toss and backhand. All right, let's get into the push or the slice backhand and what's keeping you from having a really awesome slice like a Roger Federer, like a Steffi Graf. Let's get into it. Okay, so if you are watching this video, you're like, yeah, I pretty much have, which a lot of one-handers have, I just have a push backhand and I can't seem to really get a lot of, a lot of nice drive on my push or slice, whatever you want to call it and the ball just kind of sits up there. So if you feel like you don't have the control and the power you want when you're hitting a slice backhand, there's a good chance you're doing, because I see about, I don't know, we're talking again about 3-5 level, 
I would say that about 50 to 60 percent of people mostly control the ball with their elbow and their hands when they go to hit their push or slice back in, meaning that they basically hinge at the elbow and they're going to put the action on the ball like this and this is very hard to get power and drive and get that ball to go low. I'll show you uh, from the back so you can kind of see but I want to show you from the front that basically all that action is coming from the elbow and I see a lot of recreational players do this. Now you can put the ball in play but again the ball tends to sit up. It doesn't have that nice drive and slice and skid once it bounces and you're easily poached on as well. So if you're playing doubles, you're like, yeah, all my back ends just puff up. This is the reason why. You're probably dominating your move with your elbow. Let me show you from the back so you can see, see what the ball does. So that was the push using the elbow. So what you want to start to do instead when you want to have a really nice driving slice shot is you want to make sure that you're controlling the ball. There's three things you want to focus on. The first thing you want to focus on is the energy and the drive that you put into your hip. How aggressive that kind of jabs into the ball will help you to add the power and the pop on it. And then when that hooks up and it coordinates with the shoulder, then those two things along with the unleashing, you want to make sure that the racket butt is facing out towards the side fence. Lots of people will face the racket butt. Imagine if you had a flashlight coming out of your racket butt. A lot of people will point theirs towards the net. And then again, they can't get that pop on there. But the pros, they flash their flashlight towards the side fence. So what I want to do is I want to, and I'm in the continental grip, and what I want to do is I want to make sure I got my flashlight facing towards the side fence. I want to make sure that I'm pushing this back hip into it. I'm jabbing in the ball with a nice healthy lunge into the ball. And then I'm pushing my shoulder. I'm not swinging. I'm pushing my shoulder towards the target that I want to go to. So when I do that, I'm able to hit a pretty nice slice backhand. You see that ball went nice and low and skidded through the court. Now we have that drive on the ball. Let's see if we can do another one of those. So now the key becomes how do you use those all in a match? How do you have that backhand variety? And that's the most important thing because if you have a one-hander, you will not see, when you watch somebody with a two-hander, you can see them almost come over the ball every time, but you always see a nice little mix of variety with people with a one-hand backhand. So there's a lot more variety you can add, but it's a little bit more complicated a tool to master. So that's why it's great to have a basket of balls and do some of these drills I'm going to give you right now because what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to change your technique. You're going to have to go from swinging to pushing and you're going to have to change your grip as well. So that's that takes a little while to learn how to master that. So it's great to just come out with a basket and work on different combos. So the first combo we're going to do is we're going to go cross court backhand nice high and deep to the court to the backhand corner. A lot of times it's going to be if you're a righty it's going to be righty versus righty a backhand battle. So it's really good to be able to hit a nice heavy tossing backhand cross court. So that's what we're going to do for our first shot. Our second shot we're going to hit a nice slice drive down the line and then our third shot what we're going to do is we're going to hit a little chip short cross court. So imagine our opponent running. We're going to move him back. We're going to make him run to the other side of the court and then we're going to hit a nice little short ball that they're going to have to really scramble for. So just practicing this variety. So first I've got my toss pin grip. I'm going to go cross court. That's pretty good. Then I'm going to come here. I'm going to drive it down the line. Perfect. And then I'm going to come on into the court and I'm going to chip it short and low. Okay. So that was pretty good because we've added 
a nice high topspin, then we changed our grip, and we went deep down the line, and then we went short. So we're adding a lot of variety there from side to side, and then we're also changing the depths and the heights of the bounces. So this is what makes us a very complicated player. That's why Barty was able to do so well on the tour with her one-hand slice. And you see now Anjabur, also, these women, think about how hard these women hit off the two-hand backhand. She has mostly that one-hand slice that she loves to use, and look how it is so successful out there. So you don't have to hit and rip every single ball. Okay, let's go to the next one now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a chip cross court, a rip down the line, and then another rip cross court angle. Now this is kind of a show off shot so you don't want to do this this one too many times as far as the third one. But here we go. So we're going to be in a consistent rally, right? So imagine this, you're in a consistent cross court rally, especially you righties out there, and all of a sudden you see a shot that you can move into the court and take a little bit more of a risk and you're going to rip it up the line and then you're going to see them struggling and then you're going to hit you get another short ball and you're going to hit a little angle off the court. So again, this, this uh, needs a lot of variety to be able to do this. So here we go. I'm going to come here. I'm going to chip it cross court. Oh, that's a beautiful one. I'm going to rip it down the line. Good. And now I'm going to hit a nice little angle roller. Okay. So now you see them having to really struggle and run for that ball. Now, for our final thing I want you to do is, I think everybody, and I did this on the forehand push first swing one, everybody needs to be able to hit a nice defensive lobs. It is probably one of the hardest things I have to do in clinic is when I tell people to do lobs and overheads, and how many people say, oh, I can't lob, right? And it's much better, you're gonna be much more consistent hitting a defensive lob, because especially at recreational tennis, you have a great lob. All you gotta do is just get the height up there and get it past the service box. If you do that, you're great. It's so hard to be able to time and get here and hit a nice top spin lob, which I just did there pretty nicely, but that's hard to do. That takes a lot of timing. So I'd recommend that you first master this nice little push lift. Again, I'm using I'm opening up the racket face more and I'm elevating my shoulder more and I'm basically pushing it up with my hips, my shoulders, and my hand. And see how many out of 10 you can make that go up and in. All it's got, all you're looking for is the height and then the drop past the service box. So hopefully this really shows you and opens up your eyes that, oh yeah, if I wanna really master my one hand backhand, first of all, I have to figure out what am I better at? Am I better at pushing or chipping? Or am I better at swinging and hitting topspin? and then figure out the right formula for you. And if you watch the Pro Tour, you see that there's all kinds of different successful uh, formulas out there. Like Sissy Potts, he likes to basically come over most of his backhands. Federer might sometimes be 50-50. Then you have people like Steffi Graf and Barty, where they're probably like 80 to 90% slicing the ball. So it all can work for you. Hopefully you like this video. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and a like. If you would want to improve your backhand even more, more, make sure you take my seven day backhand challenge by going to sevendaybackhandchallenge.com or clicking up here in the card section or description box. And if you don't want to miss the next video, make sure you subscribe. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, sign off.